Hello, I'm Marshall Byrne from Protein Metrics. This is the second in a series of tutorials on Bionic, our proteomic search engine. You should have already seen the first introductory tutorial. This second tutorial explains one of Bionic's unique features, modification fine control. We will be using as an example a study conducted by the ABRF IPRG, the Proteomics Informatics Research Group. This study was specifically designed to check how well bioinformatics tools perform in identifying multi-modified peptides. The dataset consists of about 16,000 QTOF spectra of a sample with numerous PTMs, including both phosphorylation and sulfation, which differ by only one hundredth of a Dalton. Here's how we search this data using Bionic. For the purposes of this demo, we use a focus database shown here, containing about 1,100 target proteins, instead of the full IPRG database of 42,000. This will give us a 40-fold speedup. As you see down here, we chose a fully triptych search. Over here, we see that we set precursor mass tolerance to 4 parts per million and fragment tolerance to 40 parts per million. Now let's look at the list of modifications we enabled. You can see the first modification is the familiar carbomidomethylated cysteine as a fixed modification. The second modification here is interesting. It's decarbamidomethylation. We set decarbamidomethylation because preview revealed that this sample is underalkylated. Here we see phosphorylation. We set it as common three, which means we're allowing up to three occurrences per peptide. Sulfation is less common, so we set that to be common two. The keyword common tells Bionic to count these modifications towards an allowance shown here. The next modification is oxidized methionine and we set that as rare one. That will be counted against an allowance of at most one rare modification per peptide. So together the two allowances mean we'll be looking for peptides with at most four modifications total. Let's go down further and look at more modifications. Here we see pyroglue, deamidated asparagine, acetylation, and so forth on down. Here we have a total of about 20 modification types where each residue mass pair is considered a modification type. Now I'll show how we set decarbomidomethylation. We scroll down, we choose carbomidomethylation, we say invert modification, and that sets it to negative instead of positive. While Bionic is running, let's discuss how input parameters affect the search space size, that is the number of peptide forms considered by Bionic. Each residue mass pair, such as oxidized methionine, approximately doubles the search space. Doubling the precursor mass tolerance also doubles the search space. An important thing to remember is that the factors multiply. Enabling 10 modifications and making them all common could expand the search space by a factor of 2 to the 10th, but making them all rare 1 expands the search space by only about a factor of 10. Search space size scales according to the equation shown here. It scales linearly with the number of spectra or with the number of peptides. Rare max appears in an exponent. We normally set that 1 to 1. The total common max also appears in an exponent, and that's one we vary. It may be 1, 2, 3, 4, or even 5. So the total common max is usually the most important single parameter for determining the search space size. The search is now finished. Let's see how we did. The search took 20 minutes and 10 seconds on six cores of this eight core computer, found 575 target proteins, and 7,057 PSMs. Here are results from a larger search in which we made the precursor tolerance 6 parts per million, the fragment 0 0.04 Daltons, and made many of those rare modifications common too. This expanded the running time to over one hour, 
Now we're up to 7,480 PSMs. Here is the poster of results published by the IPRG committee. There were 24 submissions. Everyone was supposed to send in a list that had 1% false discovery rate as measured by the target decoy approach. But only 6 of the 24 had less than 1% disagreement with consensus identifications, which is an independent way of checking false discovery rate. And here we see Bionic on the left, and it had the most true positives by every measure. The results we just saw are actually better than the results we had in 2012. Here we're looking at the results in Bionic's output viewer, and we can judge by eye whether Bionic got the right identifications. Here we're looking at a phosphopeptide identification, 0.966 is phospho. Here's the annotated spectrum with a characteristic neutral loss of 98 Daltons for phosphorylation. Bionic also annotates fragment peaks with the neutral loss. So here we see Y6, the ordinary Y6 ion with phosphate on, and we see tilde Y6, which is the Y6 ion with the minus 98 neutral loss. Now let's go to the next identification up here. This is a sulfopeptide identification, 0.956 is sulfo, and we see here a characteristic neutral loss of 80 Daltons. Now we'll review what we learned in this tutorial. Most search engines suffer from a combinatorial explosion if more than five or six modification types are enabled at one time. Bionic overcomes this combinatorial explosion with modification fine control. Nevertheless, Bionic searches can get very large. The single most important factor in the search size is total common max. You should leave this set to 2 for most searches. Phosphopeptide and O-glycopeptides are two exceptions in which you will probably want a larger total common max. Wildcard search is especially expensive. Use this option only with a focused database and turn off most other modifications. For more information, visit our website or send us email.